mathematics and statistics form a very important aspect for any strategy which you want to follow in your life. So why not apply mathematics and statistics? Why not know the mathematics and statistics of CSI net exam? Why not know how exactly CSI net exam is conducted? What are the dynamics? What are the parameters? What are the numbers which you need to meet to achieve success in CSI net? Now this particular series which we are coming up is all about mathematics and statistics about competitive exams and today we are starting with CSI net. Now having said that if you want to really qualify you must watch this video till the end because a lot of mathematics a lot of statistics which I am going to share which will probably revolutionize probably help you strategize better for this exam. So let's get started. Welcome back. So now let me start this session with a very basic parameter, very basic statistic, which is CSI net is conducted twice a year. Now look at this. No other exam is conducted twice a year. It's conducted once a year. You start from the medical entrance exams. You come to GATE, you come to ICMR, you come to DBT, you come to ARSNet. No matter which exam you pick up, all of them are conducted once a year. But this is the only exam which is conducted twice a year. Yes, you heard me right. Do bari exam conduct hota hai. That means your chances of qualifying is higher in this exam compared to any other exam. Now let us derive one more conclusion here. If you are writing this exam, you don't need to wait for the next year to write this exam again. That means you save on time. So even though this exam is tough, you have this advantage which others don't have. Moving ahead, a very important aspect which nobody knows or overlooks this aspect which is more than 97,000 people register for this exam. Yes, more than 97,000 people register for this exam but not for other subjects. I'm talking about only life sciences today. Okay, now if 97,000 people register for this exam, how many people actually write this exam? More or less 64,000 people plus minus 10% will write this exam. So basically only 64% people will write 36% people have automatically left the competition without even trying it. So now you know it. Your competition is not with the 97,000 people who registered. Your competition is with 64,000 people who actually wrote the exam. Okay, so competition thoda kam ho gaya. Theek hai. Now let's move on to the next point. The next point which I would like to make here is this is the only exam in our country which pays you money after you qualify it. Yes, apart from ARSNet which also is similar but of course is not, not conducted twice a year but CSIRNet is the only exam probably in the entire country which pays you money upfront. As soon as you qualify you activate your fellowship you start getting it. Look at any other uh, exam you have smaller exams like DBT, BET exams or GATE, some people get it but CSIR is a mega exam. It's written by a lot of people and it pays you real fellowship, real money and how much is that? I'll come to that a little later but this is a statistic which you should know. This is exam which pays you. So basically you are getting money to do your PhD. It's as good as getting employed and you should know that PhD experience is counted as teaching experience also when you apply in any educational institution or college, right? So that means you have an added advantage. You got paid to do your degree. Now nobody paid you to do your MSc but everybody pays you to do your degree PhD if you qualify CSN. So that's the point number, fact number three. Now let's move on to the fact number four which is 66% of the people Majority of the people go for JRF. Okay, and 33% people, 34% people, more or less 10% will always go for LS. Now, in my point of view, I suggest you always go for a JRF. Whether you get a JRF or not, you will definitely fall into the LS category. But if you apply for a JRF, 
the chances of you getting the fellowship is higher obviously and you know that's where the actual value of csi net lies if you have crossed that age limit then probably you can write the ls part no problem but if you are in the age limit why not try for jrf so that's my fact number 4 statistical fact number 4 now statistical num fact number 5 and now this is a very interesting fact in life sciences category more than double females write this exam than males that means more females do phd in life sciences okay then the males counterpart now what does this mean this means that females look uh, look for a very stable career uh, you know probably which is uh, uh, focused and uh, which helps them grow in their life so of course phd and then becoming a scientist is a very respectable job or a teacher or a lecturer is a very respectable job so majority of the females look for this okay so that statistics should probably help you if you are planning to get into this exam now moving ahead fact number six is you have to secure a cutoff of generally 49 percent for jrf 44 percent for ls now this is there is an exception this year we have seen a different cutoff for the current year but previously all the entire 15 or 20 years 25 years i have seen csi net you will see the cutoff ranging in between 49 44 percent to 49 percent okay only this year is an exception where we are seeing somewhere around 94 percent or something so this is the cutoff statistic which you should know now uh, Anomalies are always there probably this year is uh, exception but generally the cutoff lies in this so this, this is my fact number six now moving ahead to fact number seven which is again a very interesting fact out of the 97,000 people who register only 3,500 people that is 3.5 percent roughly will qualify this exam okay roughly 3.5 percent people will qualify this exam and rest will write the exam again that makes this exam one of the toughest exam we have got here in india right now even though a lot of people are registering less people are writing it you get a chance to write two times but very less people qualify that makes it mother of all entrance exams is in life sciences and that makes it tough so to make your life easy biotechnica always keeps coming with newer batches fresh uh, methodologies to help you qualify and this April 4th we are coming up with Jeet batch now this batch has got a lot of add-on advantages to summarize it quickly let me tell you CSI and at life sciences we are giving you unlimited classes online study material hard copy printed study material 24 7 doubt solving for your uh, preparation and exam postponement guarantee if exam gets postponed you your coaching gets postponed you don't need to pay it again and this batch starts from 4th of april 2022 so having said that let's quickly move on to the next um, pointer which is fellowship so now this 3500 people who qualified this exam can enter can apply and enter into 300 plus csir labs and central universities wherever there is a vacancy for PhD now to do that so you have to now write an interview so that's my next pointer here for every lab or for every university you need to write you need to uh, probably write another in a small entrance exam at the institute level or give two interviews two personal interviews one with the project investigator one with the committee and that is where you get selected now very less people talk about this fact number nine which is it is very difficult even though you have qualified CSI and it is very difficult to get into the top notch institutions for your PhD and of course if we have CSI and qualified CSI and qualified we would always like to get into the top institutes so to do that you need to have specialization skills and a very clear picture of what kind of research you want to do in your life so if you want to do that if you want to learn that at Biotechnica, that's our core focus because we don't just help you prepare for CSI and we help you get better in your skills as well. So this time, this April, last, last month, we, uh, we came up with Molecular Biology Techniques Internship. This month, we are coming up with Bioinformatics Advanced Internship. Now, what is this internship all about? This In, in this internship, we'll first teach from basics and then we'll switch to the advanced level. Now, this is a hands-on internship, which is virtual. You can sit at home and learn. Now, to all those people who are being introduced to bioinformatics for the first time, 
It is the biology of the future where you stand on the shoulders of computer science. Now we will be training you. We'll, we'll, we also keep coming with a lot of certification courses and internship training programs and summer trainings, interview training programs, all that we keep coming up with. But this month we are coming up with mm. bioinformatics internship which is going to definitely help you in your interview which was my previous point so what i told you earlier the fact that you have to sit for two uh, you know rounds of interview now when you sit for the interview they will ask you questions which uh, will be definitely focused towards your core area of research now if your core area of research is gonna be something in bioinformatics which is a core skill nowadays for any biologist they will start asking you questions related to bioinformatics as well. So what will happen is now they will in their mind, they will have that, OK, this fellow is not just say Sanet qualified. He's, he's got a, a lot of data mining, machine learning and bioinformatics skills. He could be a right fit for my um, project and they will definitely take you. So this is where you get an advantage with bioinformatics advanced internship, which is coming free of cost with the Jeet batch. OK, having said that quickly, let's move on to the fact number 10 and fact number 10. Very less people do this maths. 20 lakhs rupees you will get in the next five years if you finish your PhD on time. So this is the money which you get if you are just a plain and simple JRF. So 20 lakhs in five years you will get plus the PhD degree. So somebody is giving you 20 lakhs plus the PhD degree. So that's my fact number 10. Now let's come to the fact number 11, which is Shama Prasad Mukherjee Fellowship. Now this is given to the top 10 people who get selected. So what they do, they invite the top 30 people in life science, top 30 rankers in CSI at life science. They invite them for an interview. Out of those top 30, 10 will get selected for this particular fellowship. Now what really happens? Now previously I said if you are just a JRF, you get 20 lakh rupees as a fellowship. Now here what happens is, if you qualify the SPM fellowship, then you get 27.4. That means a jump of 7 lakhs extra fellowship in the next five years. So I think that's a great add on. Plus, of course, contingency grants and travel grants you get under SPM fellowship. So that's a big money which is at stake. Plus, of course, you get a chance to do your degree from the top notch institutes. OK, so that's where my fact number 11 lies. Moving ahead to fact number 12. So look at this. Who doesn't want a government job? All of us want a gov stable government job. And if you have a CSIR net qualification, your chances of getting into a government job becomes 200% higher. Now, why do I say that? Because you have a PhD from a government institution. You already know a lot of senior scientists who may be the decision makers for those positions. So that is the reason I'm saying you have a higher chance of getting placed if you do the right kind of networking and if you have a CSI net qualification. So that's my fact number 12. Now moving ahead quickly to fact number 13, which is a very, uh, which is an open secret actually that very less people know this, that if you are planning to do your PhD abroad, still you should write CSI net. Why? Because after writing CSI net, if you qualify and then you apply, you can write this in your statement of purpose that you have a expertise plus you have a certificate you, you have qualified this exam which is conducted and is a very highly reputed exam in India and you have qualified this. So you know they will give you a preference. Now you will say, oh, will they know CSI in it? Yes, you are right, they will know CSI in it. See, there has been a brain drain from our country for a long period of time. A lot of senior scientists in US, UK, Europe are from India. So when you apply, they will know CSINET because they already know about this. OK, so many of the Indian scientists who are placed as top scientists in US, UK, China, Europe, know CSINET already. So if you've qualified, when you write this in your statement of purpose, they know what's the importance, what's the sanctity, what's the kind of competition. And they already know that you're the right person for the job and your selection is easier and higher chances are there for you to get selected for a PhD in foreign countries. Now, this is the truth. Very less people know or tell you. So this is my fact number 13. Moving ahead to fact number 14, which is about the activation of fellowship. Now you look at this. You qualify CSINET in 2022. Suppose you get two years to activate your fellowship. Now you can activate in the next two years. Probably you suppose you're in the final year MSc or maybe it to, it'll take some time for you to, you know, move from institution to institution and give interviews and get selected. So you get two years. But there is a catch. Majority of the students fail to activate their fellowship because they don't get selected in the top notch institutes. They keep trying 
and finally when they you know are frustrated they end up joining some central university or some university for their phd that way you become a mediocre phd so become a phd but don't become a mediocre phd so activate your fellowship in the top notch institutions now everybody cannot get in but with the right kind of preparation with the right kind of um methodology you can definitely qualify and activate your fellowship in iic iic and iits okay now for that we have a course which we call it as phd interview guidance course which we have launched and this is for all the students who qualify at biotechnica we provide this course as a complimentary course we help you prepare for the interviews because unless you qualify the interviews in these top notch companies top notch institutes you cannot activate your fellowship okay even if you activate in a well you know little known uh, university you will end up with uh, as a mediocre phd which i'm sure you don't want to be so let's 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 move on to the last point which is the fact number 15 and that's a bitter truth which i don't want to hide sometimes fellowship gets delayed also so don't think that it is a salary which will come keep coming every month many times it gets delayed for six months or one year also okay so what happens there is or many a times uh, you know you may end up um, finishing your PhD in six years, seven years, suppose if it can, if it happens, and your fellowship lapses, right? So all these problems students face. This is another important statistics which you should know before you get in that your fellowship may not come monthly. It may come every three months or six months. I am sure CSIR HRDG is working hard to fix this problem. In fact, I see a lot of actions being taken by the head of HRDG himself or herself. They keep doing this. So, of course, in the near future, this problem will also get solved. Let's be hopeful about it. But this is a fact for now, which is sometimes the fellowship gets delayed. Now, sometimes you may overshoot your PhD, which is you may end up um doing it for five and a half six seven years right but the fellowship is there for five years after that two years you remain unpaid so for the students we have something yes biotechnica holds the hands of all those phd students who have whose fellowship has lapsed so if you were a biotechnica student who took coaching in biotechnica this facility is only for those students now what is that we call it as biotechnica extended fellowship scheme now under this scheme what do we do we provide you fellowship while you finish your phd and our fellowship remains valid for two years so suppose five years is over and you still need some time to prepare we open this applications every year on 1st of january and application closes by 31st of march now in this in between this time you can apply and if you were a biotechnica student whose phd fellowship has you know lapsed because you're taking more time to finish your phd you can always apply for biotechnicas extended fellowship scheme so this is all about our uh, uh, student support programs this is all about the statistics which i wanted to share today now people you know there, there are some facts which you already knew there were some facts probably which were new to you let me know which fact uh, you found interesting and new in the comment section. If I miss some fact about CSINet, please let me know in the comment section. So with this, we come to an end of our video. Let me tell you, Biotechnica is always there to hold your hands. But for that, if we have to hold your hands in the future with Biotechnica Extended Fellowship Scheme, or if we have to guide you for your PhD interviews or for CSINet, you need to join Jeet Batch. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, share and let us know what topics we should make our next video. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.